Welcome, welcome, welcome again. Mario Michel here. Today's topic is Spiritual Influences and the Mind, part number five. Part number five. So, uh, I would say, actually, this is a long chapter. And so, we, I hope that maybe Probably part number six, we should be done, I hope. But, yeah, this is a long chapter actually. So, so let's get right into it. Now we're going to look at Satan's work to discourage Christ to inspire hope. Well, let's see. Do not for a moment, do not for a moment, let me just let me adjust my camera real quick. Do not for a moment acknowledge Satan's temptation as being in harmony with your own mind. Turn from them as you would from the adversary himself. Satan's work is to discourage the soul. Christ's work is to inspire the heart with faith and hope. Satan seeks to, sell, to unsettle our confidence. He tells us that our hopes are built upon false promises rather than upon the sure, immutable word of him who cannot lie. Manuscript 31, 1911. And uh, actually that one, well, I'm not going to comment on that. That's pretty much straightforward. Let's move on. A remedy for every class of temptation. For every class of temptations there is a remedy. And actually yes. For every for every um, for every issue that you have God has a solution for it. Every problem a solution. We are not left to ourselves to fight the battle against self and our sinful natures in our own finite strength. Jesus is a mighty helper, a never failing support. None need fail or become discouraged when such ample provision has been made for us. Review and Herald. April 8th, 1884. And so, yeah, basically, we don't need to fight the battle for our, ourselves because Jesus Christ is there to help us. And um, I think that's one of the biggest, uh, one of the best things that we have. Because if we are for, for ourselves, we would lose. But if we ask for help, if we ask him for help, he will be there to help us. That is for sure. That is for sure. So, if you need help, he is always there to help. Um, Satan makes us believe that he doesn't want to help. But basically, he wants to help. We have to be willing to ask him him because he's not gonna force himself in our lives and what is the remedy well Christ's blood is the only remedy yes it's the only remedy and it's the remedy for everything actually for everything but you can only have that remedy um, in one condition and I believe you cannot see it soon. The law of Jehovah is exceedingly broad. Jesus 
plainly declared to his disciples that his holy law of God, or oh, this holy law of God, may be violated in even the thoughts and the feelings and desires as well as in the word and the deed. So, Matthew 5, It has been said unto you of old that you shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, if any man looks at a woman and lusts after her, he has already committed adultery in his heart. So it's not just the action. It's you thinking about it, you feeling doing it, you talking about it, and you doing it. That's basically what it is. The heart that loves God supremely will not in any way be inclined to narrow down his precepts to the very smallest possible claims, but the obedient, loyal soul will cheerfully render full spiritual obedience when the law is seen in its spiritual power. Then will the commandment come home to the soul in their real force. Sin will appear exceedingly sinful. Ex sin, sin will appear exceedingly sinful. There is no longer self-righteousness, self-esteem, self-honor. Self-security is gone. Self-security is gone. Deep conviction of sin and self-loathing is the result and the soul in its desperate sense of peril lays hold on the blood of the Lamb of God as his only remedy. So, what's the condition? Deep conviction of sin is necessary. Deep conviction of sin. Not just, oh, yeah, I'm sorry I sinned. No. You have to be in a place where you don't want to do it anymore. If it's um, talking bad about people, then you have to get to a place where you don't want to do that anymore. If it's watching bad videos, then you have to get to a place where you don't want to do that anymore. It's anything that like that, that like that that you want to move away from. You want to be really not into watching any such a thing. So that's what it that's what it's actually talking about right now. It's the deep conviction of sin. That's how you get the remedy, which is Christ's blood. Let's move on. Meeting the tempter's challenge. Satan will come to you saying, you are a sinner. Now, let me say this. If he says to you, you are a sinner, what you need to say to him is, yes, I am a sinner, but Christ came to save people like me. And two, though I am a sinner, I'm, I, uh, and I'm, I'm willing to be, to be forgiven and to repent for my sin. I know my, what my future is going to be like. But Satan, I already know your future. Because Satan knows that his future is already set. From the day he was ticked out of heaven. His future is hellfire. So, when Satan tries to remind you of your past, Reminds him of his future. Then he's going to understand what's going on. So. But do not let him fill your mind with the thought that because you are sinful, God has cast you off. Say to him, yes, I am a sinner. There you go. I Okay, let's keep on going. And for that reason, I need a savior. I need forgiveness and pardon. And Christ says that if I come to him, I shall not perish. I just said that earlier. In a different way. Yes. In his, letter to, in his letter to me, I read, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will believe the word he has left for me. I will obey his commands. When Satan tells you that you are lost, and say yes, but Jesus, but Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. The greater my sin, the greater my need of a Savior. 
and letter 98B, 1896. That's exactly what I said. When Satan comes to you and tries to give you your past, basically, you need to acknowledge your past because yes, you were in that category, but don't forget to remind him of his future because he knows what his future is already. It's already set for him. So when you do that, that mind game he wants to play at you, you play back at him. And of course, he's always going to come back and tempt again. But always stay in with Christ and he will never get to you to sin. And uh, let's see. We're going to move. Yeah, that chapter is pretty long. I think we might finish this right here. Or maybe the next one. Let's see. Okay. We're going to go right here. We're going to do attention turned from confusion to God's handiwork. God calls upon his creatures to turn their attention from the confusion and perplexity around them and admire his handiwork. The heavenly bodies are worthy of contemplation. God has made them for the benefit of men, and as we study his works, angels of God will be by our sides to enlighten our minds and guard them from satanic deception. Manuscript 96, 1899 What religion does? Now, which one though? Because it could do two things. If it's the good one, it will keep you with Christ. If it's the bad one, you will hate God and church. So, let's see which one we're talking about right now. True religion ennobles the mind, refines the taste, sanctifies the judgment, and makes its possessor a partaker of the purity and the holiness of heaven. True religion. It brings angels near and separates us more and more from the spirit and influence of the world. It enters into all the acts and relations of life and gives us the spirit of a sound mind, and the result is happiness and peace. Sounds of the Time, October 23rd, 1884. Yes, that is what true religion does. Now, do we have any more? I think we have a lot more to go. Yes. This is a pretty long chapter. So we're gonna I'm gonna do the last two, these two, and then we're gonna be done because I'm trying to keep it under twenty minutes. Increases intellectual capabilities. As in the case of Daniel, in exact proportion as the spiritual character is developed the intellectual capabilities are increased. You should read the book of Daniel to see what's going on. Review and Herald, March 22, 1898. It improves the physical health. That's right. and we are still on the true religion part, basically. Let the mind become intelligent and the will be placed on the Lord's side, and there will be a wonderful improvement in the physical health. Medical Missionary, December 1st, 1892. I keep saying we're going to end. Okay, I this time we're going to end right here. Right doing the best medicine. The consciousness of right doing is the best medicine for diseased bodies and minds. The special blessing of God resting upon the receiver is health and strength. One whose mind is quiet and satisfied in God is on the highway to health. 
to have the consciousness that the eye of the Lord is upon us and that his ear is open to our prayers is a satisfaction indeed. To know that we have a never-failing friend to whom we can confide all the secrets of the soul is a happiness which words can never express. Sounds of the Time, October 23rd, 1884. I guess I had to finish my here because they were kind of all connected. So, the best medicine is be connected to God. You want to have better physical health? Connected to God. You want to have intellectual capabilities? Connected to God. You want to have true religion? Connect to God. Basically, everything that you need to do that is good, you need to be connected to God. If you don't, then you will, will not get the good answer. So, oh yeah, it's time for me to end. So, since it is time now to end, I want to thank you guys for watching. And, I hope to see you guys soon. But, if I don't see you guys soon, I hope to see you again when Jesus Christ comes the second time. Until then, bye for now. Mother out.